These slides are intended to give you a little bit of background and a refresher on mechanical specific energy and what exactly BAF is, the bit aggressivity factor. We'll also talk a little bit about what ERA is doing when it does predictive rate of penetration. Mechanical specific energy. This was a, a concept that was developed in the 60s by the mining industry. And the idea was that you would look at the total amount of energy that was going into the drilling process and divide that by the volume of rock that was being destroyed over a given length of time. So the way the equation condenses is you've got weight on bit over the area of the bit plus 120 pi times RPM and torque at the bit divided by the area of the bit and multiplied times the rate of penetration. So, so the specific energy part of this mechanical specific energy is it is input energy divided by volume of rock destroyed. Now, if we were operating at 100% efficiency, and no machine does operate at 100% efficiency, all of the energy that we put into the drilling process would be used to destroy rock. Now, even if we didn't have any torque loss to the drill string or any heat generated, at the bit face itself, even at the bit itself, we don't generate 100% efficiency. In fact, we lose a great deal of energy to vibration and heat. And from theoretical experiments and, and actual uh, real-world case studies, what we know is that the peak efficiency of a well-performing PDC bit is around 35%. Sometimes it's less than that. Sometimes it's more than that. But it's in the neighborhood of 35% in most circumstances. Now, how much energy we need to destroy the rock correlates very closely with the confined compressive strength. And confined compressive strength is the apparent strength of the rock under downhole conditions due to the pressure of the mud column, due to the stresses that are in the rock, due to tectonics and geomechanics. The rock is stronger downhole than it is when we core it and we bring it to surface. So there's corrections that are applied to the strength of the rock due to these downhole effects. So if we happen to be able to approximate or calculate combined compressive strength, that's equivalent to the mechanical specific energy multiplied times the efficiency factor, which we call E. So E being around 0.35 means that MSE is approximately equal to the combined compressive strength divided by a factor of 0.35. So if we rearrange this MSE equation, what that actually turns into is a rate of penetration model where ROP is equal to 120 pi times RPM times torque divided by area of the bit multiplied times the confined compressive strength divided by E. And remember, this CCS divided by E is essentially mechanical specific energy, but I'm putting it in terms of confined compressive strength. And then we subtract the weight on bit. That's how the equation rearranges when we do the algebra. So all we need to know is the bit size, the speed that the bit's turning, the torque that's generated at the bit, and the weight that's at the bit. And of course, we rarely measure the torque that's generated at the bit, the RPM at the bit, or the weight at the bit. But the one that cre creates the greatest amount of error is the torque generated at the bit. Turns out when you do the sums, we're not very sensitive to actual weight at the bit. And there's not that much error when we talk about the revolutions per minute that are happening at the bit, at least not over a large time scale. But the torque that's generated at the bit, there is a lot of potential error, and it's difficult to calculate. So some of the, the complications that arise when we're trying to calculate the mechanical specific energy or really predict ROP uh, accurately, the actual weight on bit that occurs when we're slide drilling. Now we can back into that using torque and drag modeling. Uh, the weight on bit that's occurring when there's any non-rotating devices that are placed on the string. That, again, can be corrected for with torque and drag modeling. Uh, if we're rotating the string at low RPM and drilling at high rate of penetration, we know that there's a frictional loss in the string due to the way vector mechanics end up splitting some of the friction in the axial direction and some of the friction in the circumferential direction. When we have high axial velocity and low circumferential velocity, there is some axial drag that results in the weight on bit that we perceive at surface from being very different than the weight on bit that's actually downstairs on the bit face. Now, fortunately, that circumstance doesn't happen very often. 
usually the revolutions per minute and the circumferential velocity that it creates are quite high compared to the axial velocity or rate of penetration. So we don't have to worry about that one very often. Now, the bigger complications are the bit RPM when we're using a positive displacement motor, but we can correct for that if we happen to have some idea of the performance of the motor that we're using. And we can get that from the manufacturer's performance sheet. Uh, bit RPM, this is the tr tricky one, remember, it, the bit, uh, sorry, the bit torque. The bit torque is not equal to the surface torque. It's not even close to the surface torque, even in vertical wells. Now, the, the trouble is we don't very often measure torque at the bit. Even if we have a torque sub in the string, it's not at the bit face very often. Now, we can infer how much torque is coming from the bit by using differential pressure. If we happen to be using a positive displacement motor, if we take the performance of the motor, and, of course, the torque that's generated by the bit and the torque that's felt at the motor is correlated to the differential pressure. So that one's actually quite fortunate for all the operations that are using a positive displacement motor. Of course, one potential error there is as the stator rubber starts to wear, the performance of the motor does decay over time. Uh, and then the other approach that we can take is to use torque and drag calculations. If we use some very specific procedures, we can infer what the bit generated torque is by looking at the on-bottom drilling torque and the off-bottom friction factor that we measure at each connection and then applying a torque and drag calculation and predicting how much string generated torque we think exists when the bit's actually on bottom and there's weight on the bit. Now what exactly is the BAF? Uh, bit aggressivity factor. This is a new concept, a new term that didn't exist until k &M developed it. It's not out in literature, it's not for public consumption just yet, but what we've done is we've created a factor that relates how much reactive torque is generated by a given bit to the weight on bit that's applied and the confined compressive strength of the rock that we're drilling through. And then that's all normalized for the area of the bit. And the idea there is that if we normalize for the area of the bit, once we start to understand this BAF factor a little bit more, the BAF factor would, would translate from one bit size to another. As you go from 12 and a quarter inch bit up to a 17 and a half or down to an eight and a half, if it's the same overall cutter layout and blade count and general aggressivity, then the same factor would apply regardless of size. Well, how we calculate the BAF is we take the torque that is at the bit and we divide by the area of the bit itself, the weight on bit that's applied, and then we multiply times the confined compressive strength. So what this equation basically says is, how much torque does a bit generate for a given amount of weight on bit, assuming that I'm in a particular rock strength? Now the equation's linear. What that means is if the weight on bit doubles, then the BAF doubles, if all other factors remain constant. If it takes twice as much weight on bit to generate 5,000 foot-pounds of torque, and I happen to be in the same confined compressive strength rock, well, then that means that that's not as aggressive as a bit of a bit. Or conversely, if for a fixed weight on bit of 30,000 pounds and for a fixed confined compressive strength of 10,000 PSI, when I generate a lot of torque for that given amount of weight, then that means that I've got a very large bit aggressivity factor. Now, if I don't generate much torque, if the torque generated is only 500 foot-pounds, then that would be a very low bit aggressivity factor. The bit aggressivity factor for this equation, the way that we've written it here, the units would be in pounds per cubic foot. But it turns out that it's easier to write the BAF values, because they tend to be quite large if we're using units of pounds per cubic feet, if we use units of kips per cubic feet, thousands of pounds per cubic feet. And that's the default units that are be displayed in ERA. Now, how do you know what the BAF is? Well, we have to determine BAF empirically because it's such a new concept. We don't know by looking at a given bit. Let's say it's a 513, whether or not it's a BAF of 50 or a BAF of 500. We do know that from back calculating the BAF on several wells now that it typically is in the range of around 200. It might be as low as 100, or it might be as high as 1,000. But typically, the aggressivity factor is in the neighborhood of 200. That's the scale of the value that we typically see. We're not highly experienced at it yet, but that's what we've seen so far.
what we envision in the future is that we'll start to develop a database of typical bath values for different bits. For example, an 813 we know perhaps might be in the range of 50 to 60. And uh, 513 might be in the neighborhood of 300 to 400. But until we get a little bit more experience with it, we really have to remain quite open-minded and go through the hind casting process to figure out what the bath factor is in a given area. And that's what we'll be talking about in the next video.